Welcome to the 2400 Block Podcast with your hosts, Johnny Rubes and Ken. Podcast spin, intelligence binge watch. Johnny Rubes with the wisdom, never botch. Dark thoughts, ventilate, handy, great knowledge. 2400 crew, like Griffin College. Clever minds unite, discussions land tight. Sync up thoughts, intertwine, never bark, trite. Mics up, lights down, we the crew profound. Johnny Rubes, know the truth, bomb is going round. Catchy beats, the block that never sleeps. 2400 sound in your brain, it creeps. Catchy sounds, the block that never bounds. 2400 toss and sucks inside a sound. Catchy beats, the block that never sleeps. 2400 sound in your brain. All right, here we go. Tuesday afternoon here, Tuesday morning there. Hello, Ken. You look great, by the way. You know what, man? I. You're you're the inspiration. Um you know, uh <laughs> I had a lot of hair. Yeah. It, it wasn't it was it was it was fucking annoying. <laughs> and you know, when you are I you know this word gets a it's not oversaturated in my head, but I say it because I'm really trying to advocate for myself by saying it, but I'm neurodivergent. Mm -hmm. So Things like having hair and the upkeep of it and everything has all the upkeep is the hard part. So I was going to grow some dreadlocks and all kinds of I colored it and I was like, I can't keep up with that. shit. <laughs> what, what, pro what prompted you on the decision that you wanted to bald your hair? Um, dude, it's or been bald your head. There you go. So last year when I was in um, rehab, I mm -hmm. cut my hair because I think 2022. I was just looking to – hair is connected to energy as well. Uh -huh. So if you're, like, connected to the energy that your hair was in, I feel it. I feel, like, overwhelm of the hair. I haven't really – because with black hair or people with hair that needs oil more than, you know, more people that need oil, you got to oil your scalp a lot more. And the, not oiling your scalp makes the hair brittle. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure about all other. That's why I said it's not just black um, people that need oil in their hair. You need the oil. Um, people need oil in their skins in general. But when you don't do that, it starts getting brittle and it starts becoming a mess. And the beard, even though it breaks, it still grows. And I got this little Fu Manchu action here. This is <laughs> this is black and this is gray. <laughs> So I was like, yeah, that's, I'll rock that. That's easier to, nah, um, throw some in here real quick. And my hair is, when it is curly, so when it shrinks up, it looks like, like this. But when I comb it out, it's like ZZ top. So I think you have a picture of me looking like God or something. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh yeah, I'm not God, but I'm God like. So it was just a decision that was long time in the making. And I'd already cut it last year, and I like the feeling of that streamline. Mm -hmm. um, not having to worry about at least that saves you on a shampoo. Um, uh, saves you from seeing hair all over your shower when you're. And it's just, it's just and I have heat intolerance. Mm -hmm. One of the biggest things, one of the biggest reasons that I have heat intolerance, and I'm starting to really get in touch with my body um, again, because you know, being neurodivergent, you it's called interception. Mm -hmm. And it's not it's not being connected to feelings of what's going on in your body. So it could be hot. Most people would just retreat. I'm I'm ignoring signals. Uh huh. So if you have a head full of hair and you're ignoring signals and you got pants on and you, you're not realizing shorts, less hair, or it's something that's more cooler. So it's it was just a decision in the making, and I'm about tired of ignoring myself. So it's uh, really awesome to finally be streamlined at least and i haven't never had this style actually bald with a long beard i've never i'm feeling like Ken, kimbo slice i call it <laughs> kendo slice you know yeah <laughs> i think you, yeah. you think you had a picture that you that, I sent it to that you have on there <laughs> yeah that's that's what i really feel like inside oh like ah getting gritty but yeah long answer you know i've been using that on um on some of our platforms now, right? Like YouTube, like uh, Facebook, like even our, our X page, Twitter, of course, formerly known as Twitter, but formerly we are using the new images Twitter. now. <laughs> the new image of you <laughs> has now replaced the old one because you have no hair. 
change is different when you're looking at a podcast and I'm like, this guy has red hair and this guy <laughs> doesn't. And for people who literally have snafu when there's such a drastic difference, yeah, that is good mm-hmm. to have the new pictures. Because, you know, it's, I'm, you know, you, you haven't been in the dating world and I'm kind of not and I kind of am. When you put up pictures, you put up current pictures, <laughs> like not <laughs> pictures from last year where you looked your best and you weren't bloated and you look great and your muscles are bigger. And, uh, you know, just keep it real. You know, like I want to color my hair, but right now that's maintenance. So I was like, at least I could do these basic things and this uh-huh. works. So, yeah, I appreciate the update. It's, 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 it's a little angry looking, but I mean... <laughs> I think it's just going to rile some people up. I think just looking at you, they they probably know what to expect in this podcast. You know what to expect. I I'm <laughs> I'm nice guy, but I'm no bullshit. Well, you know, I'm I when when I'm an attack dog when when you know, at the drop of injustice. So I I this represents the side of me that's just tired of being ignored, you know. Mhm. You know, it, you speak about your mental health, you speak on it, and that, but people, they are either busy or they only see some of what you're saying or hear some of what you're saying. So when you have to, like, become all the way what you're trying to say, people hear you. Mm-hmm. So then I can go back to Ben. <laughs> Chipper. And yeah. Awesome. You know, that, that that's my natural demeanor is just... Like Lil Wayne said, I'm not a killer, but don't push me. <laughs> uh, so, so today, today, we gonna learn today <laughs> who Johnny Rubes is, Uh-oh. and that is something that I don't take lightly in just saying, because when you're Talking about yourself, hearing yourself talk, thinking about your problems, thinking about your woes and not masking them. Um, it's difficult. It's, it's not easy. And some of us have our ways of dealing with public speech or yeah. talking in general to people when you really don't want to mm-hmm. or, or processing emotions or processing whatever's on your head for the day. Most people either quiet or they're very talkative like me. And for me, I hate talking. I just, I have so much that I'm trying to process that I'm speaking another language to most people when it comes to the word neurodivergence and all these words that I'm saying, they fall out the ear socket when I'm talking to people. So it gets frustrating when you can't talk and you're not fully listened to. But today is a day for you to just let loose like we've seen the characters that you put on we've seen the Casey Kasem voice what we're what what we're getting today is the man the myth John Eric the man who holds the seat of the of the things that's happened in his world and comes on and give you everything you guys need when it comes to news, when it comes to topics, when it comes to bringing the people together, when it comes to the glue. This is the man who brings it together with a smile. He's humble. He's a he's a professed people pleaser like most of us empaths are, has a big heart for people. But when you have a big heart for people, you know what I'm saying? You get yeah. eventually a little, little, little irritated to the point where you can't stop holding it back. So today we're uncovering Johnny Rubes and unveiling John Eric. Thank you. Feel, feel free to run loose. Don't worry about staying on topic. Don't worry about anything, man. Just this is your space. This is your safe space. You're the curator of the 2400 block podcast. <laughs> okay? This was a block that you grew up on and you're bringing it to the people. Feel free as the curator, curator to let loose on the block. Let them have it. Uh, 
That's so wonderful, Ken. I wish you were my spokesperson on the daily, man. And it just, uh, oh man, <laughs> just it just Let feels so heartwarming it. just listening to that. It's so. because, bro, you've inspired you've inspired many people through your journey of helping. You've raised money for people so they can get their education and not have to worry about things while they're, you know, I've heard the stories. I've heard the heart. I've seen, I've, I've, you've reported stories on our friends that have gone and passed. Um, but that weighs on an empath. So when you talk about getting yourself, getting your cup filled, it's really not about getting your cup filled. It's about emptying the cup because you have a lot of resources. You have a lot of knowledge. I talk a lot of knowledge. It's it's one thing to get your cup filled, but it's one thing to actually just get it really released so you can bring back stuff that keeps you at bay. So mm-hmm. yeah, man, I'll, I'll be your I'll be your hype man every day if that if that's what I was put on earth to do is um encourage others genuinely. And I see everything that you do. You know, we don't talk about it all the time, but I see I see you. I see what you're doing over there. I see, I see the nerd in both of us. I see the joy in both of us. And I see the frustration when you can't be who you really want to be because of perspectives and upbringing. So this is, you know, this is your time. So with that said, ka, 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 I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Ken. Thank you very much for being here and talking Ooh. about me. <laughs> boom, boom, boom. I always wanted to baby. bring that. I always wanted to bring that guy baby. back. Mm, but uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 It, it, it sure does Real feel podcast. good. Um, All day. You know, just hearing you out. <laughs> See, now it already ignite, ignited a fire in me. Um, That's yeah, what I life do, has baby. been. Live yeah, wire. life has been uh, great. Uh, it's been tough growing up, you know, being a, you know, part of the military brat family and uh, yeah. going from place to place. So, of course, uh, you know, you make friends along the way, then you mm-hmm. lose them and then you have to start over again. And that was one of the, the toughest things I had to deal with when I was a when I was a kid. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was only like maybe five, six at the time and having to carry that uh, when we moved to Virginia. And mm-hmm. it's it was it's just been different. I uh it's been difficult for me um mm-hmm. actually to find a niche. Um growing up. Uh I was just mainly like just at home. I mean we didn't really have time to, you know, hang out with other kids, but you know, mm-hmm. we played with them as you know, when when there was the time when they were present. But other than that, right. you know, our family we we kept it to ourselves. Uh, and it continued on, you know, this trend continued on from, you know, first grade on up until mm-hmm. maybe, wow, the end of high school. That That's how life was for you're me. You're referring to people... um, being closed in. Mm, um, yes. And in, in environments, um, for, um, for, for everybody who's listening, I'm a military veteran. Um, what he's talking about is being a military what they call brat or Mm -hmm. child of a person who's in the military. So the difference is you're moving regardless of whether you want to or not. And if, if, if you don't mind me sharing, you weren't born here in the United States. You are right. You were born in Japan. Yep. Yakuza. Okay. You are a Filipino Technically, if anybody on here that's Japanese, he's technically Filipino Japanese, and that is a completely different environment to be and then move to another place. So that whole isolation is what what he's talking about here. Yeah. And See, I, that, I can, that's how it yeah. is. When I'm talking, when I'm going full steam with you, Ken, my my glasses are fucking up once again. This is the second time now in a podcast that my Uncover. glasses. Are fogging. Take those fuckers <laughs> off, man. Unravel. This is you. This is you, man. You, this this is your safe space. You don't have to avoid anything. Anything you're uncomfortable with, you don't have to talk about it. But what we're talking about is bringing you out so you can just, if you have to flash us, fuck it, and, and mentally, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, we don't want to see, you know, balls and whatever. 
<laughs> because there's kids watching. But uh, for the most part, yeah. Yeah. Um, thank you for sharing uh, and opening up. So, you know, there's your floor. Oh, thank you. Yeah. You know, I do get kind of nervous when I'm doing this because I'm the subject. That's <laughs> or, when que- or when questions are asked about me. But, yeah, I just want to just be honest with everyone that my life was pretty much, uh, you know, at home. Uh, for the most part, that's how I learned to be creative. Like when nobody's around, I start drawing or I start messing with the radio. I start touching the microphone. I just start messing with things. Mm-hmm. So there's that creative side of, creative side of me that's already there. And right. I just haven't had, um, you know, too much exposure on that. Uh, growing up, it was just me and my brothers. We're always, you know, at home. We always uh, looked at the TV because our parents are always away. You know, my dad yeah. is, out, is out a lot, you know, maybe 12 months out of the year or even so maybe six months. you were a different type of latchkey kid. Like, I was a latchkey kid, too, where we, we let ourselves into the house. You were a latchkey kid, military kid. So mm-hmm. a lot more isolation and a lot more time to self, but not a lot of social yeah. integration, I should say. Mm-hmm. And that's, that's how I was. Um, uh, growing up, it was hard, man, uh, especially when having to interact with other kids my age. You know, mm-hmm. they're they're all living a different perspective compared to me. Uh, they're more uh, their their parents are more carefree, letting them go out, letting them be letting them be exposed right. to you know certain things, also hanging out safety. at places. Yeah, the mall was, was popular it? back then, <laughs> so they're all there. <laughs> the mall. The arcades, you know, it was all alive back then, man. What a time to be alive. Yeah, that mall was a place. That was the hangout for everybody. After you got from school, you either Uh going to be doing sports or hanging out at the mall and trying to pick up someone or talk to somebody or make friends or whatever. Yeah. You weren't, was it, I wouldn't say helicopter parenting, but was it similar to that just because of the fact that it's a cultural thing and this is an environment that we're not used to. So we just kind of keep to ourselves. What, what made it hard? Uh, what made it hard, man? Honestly, uh, Personally. was that, was that my parents were, they were just there, but not really like motivating me, not inspiring me. They're just there mm-hmm. to make the money, to make sure that they're taking care of me, you know, financially. Mm-hmm. Um, my dad and I weren't really close back then. Uh, right. you know, we barely talk even today. I mean, he's, he's, um, he's improving. I'm improving. Um, yeah. Especially when we're, you know, distant nowadays, it sort of brings us closer, I guess. Yeah. Right. And yeah, my it, mom, it, it, mm-hmm. my mom is just, you know, she is the voice of our family. Um, you know, when some things go wrong or, uh, she always goes up there and makes sure we're okay. Uh, but other than that, uh, she didn't really like tell me what I want to be when I, you know, get older. I had to, yeah. to find yeah. that on my own. And to this very day, I'm still like a, you know, still in the unknowns, man. I mean, yeah. somehow, some way I've, you know, went from job to job, made some money and became, you know, financially okay. But I have not reached, uh, the point in my life where I say I'm living the dream because I'm not. Yeah. Yeah. And what, what do you, um, I've, I've heard a lot, um, of person, you know, close mm-hmm. stories similar to that where you were even getting encouraged or you were discouraged, not on purpose, but to keep you safe, it was discouragement. So in your case, you had the basics, but you also didn't have the cheerleader side saying, yeah. go do this thing that you want to do. So that's almost in a way the same thing as discouraging by not having any encouragement. And yeah. what, 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 we're talking about here is childhood trauma. What happens when a person is not thriving the way their brain is developing, Mm -hmm. then this, then this, the, the environment starts to change and ripple the way it's rippling, but not the wavelength that your brain is, is needed to happen. So then we're talking about it here. Um, and our, our later ages, still something that was needed as a kid. And most people will look at us as adults and 
their perspective is you should have gotten past that. You should have. Well, you are so artistic and you are you have a podcast. You have all these things. But what we're talking about here is addressing that need for it to have been validated. We don't want to be in isolation, learning things and trying to hang on to it. We want to be validated that the thing that we're passionate about, that you're passionate about, is okay. It's not a shameful thing. If you decide to become a freaking sign flipper and that's your thing, just like wind, moon, and uh, soul, then that's your thing. But you're talking about an artist. You're talking about a brilliant person here. And that's nothing on the parents because we're talking about cultural evolution. It's just the fabric of how we move as a society. We only do what we know. But we're validating you today because, no, it's not okay. It's not okay to be put in a box that you're uncomfortable in or not even let out the box, so to speak. So, uh, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm saying it right in your face. You're validated for one, the skill and the desire to have gotten out there. Um, cause it could be an introvert thing. It could be many different things, but it is a trauma. So it is a real thing. Cause not a lot of people, people hear the word PTSD and they hear trauma. And it becomes like a cliche term. Mm-hmm. But what we're talking about right at this very moment is a memory that will replicate over and over until it gets heard, until it gets addressed, until we are actually feeling that validation and support. So um, I'm an empath and I, I've always seen it. I just can't address it because it they're called triggers for a reason. You can start talking about something, and if there's not a solution to it or Mm -hmm. the support around it, you can fall back and not want to talk about it at all because it's embarrassing or it's you may you're vulnerable. But you are on a podcast, my friend, with a background, with mics, with professional headsets, with super duper people. And you're still and this is the trauma you're dealing with as you're doing that. So kudos to you for putting yourself out here and interviewing and talking to people, even though you're holding that back, because it's it's hard. It's a hard. It's a hard amount of energy to hold back and it not come springing out somehow. So, yeah, yeah, I just want to make sure you understand that from this day forward. Who you are, who you were, are all one and the same. And I'm 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 your biggest supporter. And I hope that this podcast will bring all those that we've interviewed and lift you up. Cause you, from what I'm understanding, you just got paid officially. Congratulations for your graphic design work. Oh, thank you. So that's that's you're you're here. It's 2024, bro. You're here. You're it, it's happening. It's time to let it loose. We're uncovering Johnny <laughs> Rubes to see John Eric right now. Yeah, it's uh, it's taking this long. I mean, guys, if you if you're still at that age uh, like me, I'm about to turn 50 and you're still dreaming. Uh, just keep going, man. Who knows where, where it could lead you? Um, just be you know super confident, although there's a yeah. lot of obstacles that might be in the way. Yeah, but uh, yeah, it's never too late to dream. Uh, just you know, focus age, on your passion. Focus on what you you like doing in life. Not just he the doesn't Joe have his grace showing because he's a cheater. But um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> but if he gets some stubbles, you'll see it. We are <laughs> not young. Our bodies don't like what we're doing and how we're doing it as creatives. Mm-hmm. But we have a different energy as creatives to keep pushing. But the obstacles are hard because, yeah, you're older. Yeah. So, yeah, it is never too late. It's never. But those obstacles is probably the, the, the hard part is what we're really addressing today. Because yeah. we can sit up there and talk about positive mental attitudes and all that, you mm-hmm. know, yada, yada is great. 
but the person sitting with it every day, the hard part, which is talking and really being honest, that's the hard part. So that's what we're really doing today is getting airing that out. It's not going to happen on one podcast, but you've already been doing the legwork. Two years ago, you like you told me, I stopped, I stopped fucking bending over backwards for people. So talk talk about the talk about the struggle, man. I mean, talk about how it's impacted your life not being able to be in an environment where you're getting that validation. See, being stuck at home, uh, that that's where it really started, man. I mean, I really didn't had uh, that much people to speak besides my brothers, of course, mm-hmm. and for some reason, it just made me. Uh, socially awkward. Even to this very day, there are some times I still feel socially awkward, but I have advanced a little bit more as a person. But back then, it was really hard to just, you know, socialize with classmates who were in, you know, in, in their, you know, own world, looking at all the, uh, you know, trends happening around them. And here I am, clueless, not really knowing much what's going on, except watching, you know, the cartoons uh, during the afternoons or cartoons in the, you know, in the mornings. Or yeah. maybe watching A Team, you know, primetime TV back then. Uh, yeah, I was always I <laughs> yeah. was always fixated with the TV, and that's how it made me, you know, connect with some of the, you know, the the stuff uh, that were the latest at that time. That's how. That's the only time I really connected uh, when it comes to like the latest goings on because of what I see on TV. But um, when it comes to just talking with some of these kids. Uh, you know, my age back then, it was hard, man. I mean, I, there were some times I was really passive and I just didn't really feel like talking. I mean, even a friend um, mm. who, who, you know, who I'm working for as a graphic designer, he mm. just told me about a flashback about about he was telling me, like, John, can you can you draw this? Because he was seeing me do my thing. You know, he's mm-hmm. he's, seeing, mm-hmm. he's seen me doing all the, the hand drawn illustrations like, oh, can you do this for me? Talent, and then yeah. there was a time I was like really moody on him. And then, you know, it was like to, 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 I told him to leave me alone or something like that. I'm like, wow, did mm-hmm. I really said that? So see, I don't even remember some of what happened back in, you know, elementary school. And now mm-hmm. he's bringing this up to me and here I am just trying to see if I could flash back to that moment, but I don't remember, but I do remember though, that I was kind of a moody person. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I wasn't really, um, what you call it, a big impact in people's lives. And that even continues on to this very day. I mean, when people think of me, they probably just think of me for just for that one moment or just some certain reminder uh, in mm-hmm. their lives, like what, what they saw of me, but they're not really like connected. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But that's, that, all I, that's, that's all I am, that, man. Just a footnote. <laughs> well, well, I, I will tell you this, and it's called, um, cognitive distortions i'm i will say that i'm not a professional nor am i licensed mm-hmm. uh so any advice that i'm giving is based surely on my experience but okay. cognitive distortions is where we get to when our perceptions are not being lived the way we would like them so we start becoming all or nothing mm-hmm. so what i heard is that you are in a place where you're isolated from social interaction personality wise the outgoing side of you, the extrovert, is not the forefront representative. So your isolation begot a therapy, creative. You happen to be a creative mind. Some people are math minds. Some people are uh, philosophers like me. Um, But art was your thing because of an isolation so yes. my my thought process because I'm able to, I'm a clear cognitive. Mm-hmm. Um, your moodiness, you felt. Correct me if I'm wrong. You felt protective over your creative energy because it was right. therapy for you, uh-huh. right? Yep. So if someone's asking for something that you are holding on to as a security blanket. You you're wanting to snatch my career security blanket and and you want to use it. You don't even know me. You just want to use what I'm what my mind's doing. But you, don't you want to know me? So that's kind of what I got out of that. So you 
then you also said that no, uh, everybody's just wanting a piece of you, but don't know the real you. Right. Now, here's the part where it's, it rides right in the middle of cognitive distortion and true. People get used to the things we give, so therefore that becomes their currency with you, which you do. Mm-hmm. It's, uh, we almost kind of forget to get to know the person because we, as the person that is giving the art, is, va- is, is using that as a likable currency. They like me because I do this. Right. You don't even think about the aspect of social getting to know somebody for real, for real, but you're giving out your heart. And that same currency was not getting, filling your cup. So now we're emptying the cup with the perspective of you are an amazing artist. You are an amazing voice. You did curate this persona, Johnny Ruse, based on all of your experience and trauma. And if it wasn't for your journey, you wouldn't be talking today. We probably wouldn't have met. Yeah. I met you in your creative energy when we were modeling, when we we're doing our point and shoot photography. We emulate these things to this day. Those things are byproducts of your trauma, but they're foundational to who you are. You know, Joe Dispenza is a uh, doctor and he says, uh, you know, he's an epigenetist, he's a uh, chiropractor, he's a um, neuroscientist. And he says that your personality is your personal reality. Your personal reality can be changed. We don't think so. But just because you're an artist doesn't mean you can be a pianist. You know, that, that mm-hmm. it's a, it's an energy. So you're protecting that. But that is your world. That world of watching cartoons, that world of getting yep. updates. That's why this podcast is amazing, brother. Because you took that isolation and entertained yourself. That is your personal reality. The changing part, whether you choose to or not, is to take the the moment and walk down that path as weird as it is, you're doing that right now. You decided to get on this podcast today and walk down that dark path. Even your lighting right now, it's a little dark, but that's befitting for unraveling, uncovering um, a name because we tend to just use names to kind of hide behind, right? Yeah. Johnny Rubes, you know, you know, I was going to put, I was going to tell you to put Kendo slice on there because it's, <laughs> but, but my name is Kendrick. It's yeah. Kendrick. I've called myself Ken because of e- made it easier for people. But, you know, today's a day to take that step, you know, and, and I, Right now, I'll, I'll be honest with you. This is this is a perfectly honest unraveling myself because I'm re- right now uh, unmasking. I'm not going to get into that topic, but we know what masking is in general. Unmasking is the opposite. When I talk, there is a level of nerves that are in my my core mm-hmm. that I'm sitting on top of, and I've used knowledge, I've used intellect. To keep me, I use my extrovert first. I'm getting to know my introvert now. So the only reason why I'm able to have this conversation the way I'm having as if I sat there and practiced this is because I've mastered a mask. I've mastered Ken, the one that everybody wanted to be easy. It's easy. It's easy. Ken's easy going. But Kendrick, it's like, but you don't know me. I'm at this place in my life where I'm trying to reach out and I need what I'm giving out. You know what I mean? Yeah. Same as you. You're looking for that reciprocation of energy and it's not coming back the same because we teach people how to treat us, not on purpose, based on what we know. So the hard parts, what, what, what makes it hard today 
not finding yourself earlier on in those in those time frames of darkness. See, I wish I, I I learned more about how how I was socially back then, you know, or someone could at least you know hang out with me, even for just you know a few hours in a day, man. I mean, that would definitely be a huge improvement. But man, I I mastered this pretty much all on my own, but it's at the slowest pace. And I mean, even yeah. my social interactions, whether it's just hanging out with the fellas or even talking with the you know the hottest chicks back in the day. It was kind of awkward, man. I mean, because, yeah. you know, I just was not introduced to that kind of world, man. I still think of myself like I'm still here at home. You know, I have yeah. not left. You know, my mind has not left, even though I have had the you freedom. Said it right on the money. Yeah. Yeah. You even said though right if I had the, the freedom, um, you know, later on after high school and then going to college, it still felt awkward, man. Mm. And then, you know, there are some you know, situations, I'm not going to like discuss it openly, but of course we all have our own battles and sometimes you learn, you know, the consequences of something. And, you know, back then uh, I won't learn a pen painful lesson until it happened or until after it happened really. Right. So that's the heart, uh, the heart. Yeah. Yeah. So I definitely had to school myself, you know, in, in, a, in that, in that way. Uh, so I can learn. I mean, even now, uh, I mean, I even learned how it was, man, like what it felt like being scammed. You know, I had to learn that on my own. Yeah. I, you know, faced the consequence of that. Mm. And uh, yeah, it's just something that I've learned and hopefully never will face it again. And this was on my own doing and, you know, I fell for it and I just yeah. move on after that. I know and that's, a, that's a vulnerable thing to, to yeah. share because a lot of people don't want to share that level of vulnerability, like um, the naivety of it, of it all, mm -hmm. is you're going in thought thinking you've calculated what a scam looks like, and these yeah. scammers are finding new ways to get into the personal headspace to get you, and so that's not your fault. <laughs> so thank you for being honest about that, because a lot of people would just be like, "Yo, dog, I, that's embarrassing. I lost, you know, I, I've heard." Just two cases where a friend bought some tickets to um, um, a concert and was trying to sell them, and then a person, you know, took mm -hmm. the tickets, you know, and yeah. without paying for them, and they were that's what they were looking to do. They weren't looking to pay for them, and you won't know that because the way our social society has come, we're now dealing with everybody around the globe now socially. Yeah. So it's hard to pinpoint. Just people you know on a block and how they interact. You're talking about people that are in somewhere in a different state buying your ticket, and you have to think this or that about them, or just go with the flow. And it's you, until you, know you what, Ken, get scammed. Yeah, we're already like living in a society like an era of convenience. Yeah, and I think that's yeah. what you know, that's why people you know fall to these things because they they want things. Yeah. Right then and there. Instant. Right then and there. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. And, and and if if we keep heading down the path of everything being convenient, you can take an exercise pill, really? Okay. Um, you can get the ab cruncher like the way Bruce Lee had it to get your abs <laughs> perfect. Okay, Bruce Lee did it, man. Washboard abs. If you want the core, because it's not the look that you're looking for, it's the mm -hmm. core. The core is what holds your torso and your legs together. That is, you have to do the work, but you can't blame anybody because the way our society is rolled out, all the things that seem simple get complicated and more complicated to where you start losing track of yeah. of it being convenient. It's not convenient anymore. It's be, Everything's beta, and we're being used as the guinea pigs to make sure it works at the expense of a scam. Yep. You know what I mean? So no, that's 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 stuff that's not your fault, man. And if be, to be perfectly honest, I believe you're more of an introvert person. So you you're more guarded in general to who you are. Um, whereas an extrovert person's out there. They they they'll walk out naked. They'll do whatever. Yeah. You know, and that and that from for me, I'm an extroverted introvert. Um, but that is what my survival mask was. 
I had to grab onto that. I'm a mil- I, I I have childhood trauma too. We're not. This is not about me, but um, that trauma will make you do something. But because we live in duality, hot, cold, positive, negative, the reality is, even though it's negative stuff that has come from your journey, bro. Again, I'm going to roll it back to positive. I only do positive mental attitude when it's really happening and I can take place is that you have a platform. I've seen you go from radio to in person and face and live. You've grown on your own, man, because you had a story to tell. But you do have to put on a mask in order to get to the stage, too, you know, just like yeah. in, in, in charades, yep. the masking charades. You got to put on your mask while you're dancing until you feel comfortable. So I hope I hope that this podcast is the beginning of you feeling comfortable with that side of yourself. And, you know, again, I speak about mental health like it's rainwater. So, you know, I have no problem speaking with it because two years ago I wasn't comfortable speaking about my mental health because I was a part of that masking world with the trucker and the man and father and blah, blah, blah. But we're walking into society where it's just time. It's time for us to stop pretending. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because we'll thrive so much harder now that we've developed this journey and this is our podcast and whatever. Yeah. The real person behind it is where we're really looking for, you know, at the end of the day. And every, I know everybody wants to be entertained and look at the cat playing the piano and bullshit like that. And you got your little five minutes. Now get back to work. But we're, 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 we're bringing real real energy here at, on the block so you know ken we, i was yeah go ahead before, before you go on i i was pretty much you know masking my whole life uh especially i don't want people to know my weakness back then right no understandable yeah and i think what brought me enough confidence to sort of get out of that show was Taking a public speaking course, and that was fun, man. That was no, really fun. You took a person, public speaking class? <laughs> yeah, it was in a, you know, technical college. Uh, no, tech, yeah, yeah, technical college. So I was yeah. able to. That's a huge step. Most to get people a grasp don't of that. Do that. And yeah. Speaking in front of people, sometimes holding these, uh, you know, note cards, but you're trying to speak more without yeah, yeah. relying on those cards yeah, and looking at your contact, audience. Blah, blah, yeah. Blah, yeah. No, um, I, you know, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, you know, I notice every, I'm a body language person, so I can notice body mm-hmm. language. So I can see that your eye contact is, but it's a budding eye contact, right? Because you could take a public speaking course just, was it elective or you actually picked it? Uh, it was actually, um, it was required actually. Yeah, or, I think everybody yeah. t- had to take a public speaking yeah. class. <laughs> I was the I was the guy in the public speaking class. Yeah, so I made this dish and this. Yo, I just want to talk. Yo, yeah. <laughs> so talking doesn't necessarily make you a public speaker. It just means that you're so nervous, you're just ready to start talking your ass off, and hopefully everybody caught what you was fucking saying until you get good at just improving it. That's me. Yeah, my public speaking was I'm just gonna just throw out a lot of words, and I hope you think that I was confident. <laughs> <laughs> so no, bro, I'm I'm no different. I just I just was born with some some kind of undestructible charm that I've gotten across with. But no, the body language right now is will. That's what yeah. we're seeing here is will willpower, willpower. It was an elective. But you're speaking yeah. about it. It did help you. So it's, you know, this man, this man started the 2400 block podcast. So because of your journey, right? Because of you wanting to get out there and not be isolated, you yep. forced it. You forced it by you. You. I don't even know how to say this. You, <laughs> you, you covertly got me to be a wingman. I'll be honest with you. I was like, oh, shit, man. Okay, I don't have a script for this one. I'm, a ma- uh, I'm about to actually go into that thing about how how you, um, you know, made an impact in my life. I'll, I'll be about to tell that in a moment. But I'm glad to, you know, 
present day. I'm, I'm trying you to being make this more wingman. about you, bro. I know. <laughs> But, You've interviewed so, me 20 million times. But there's that connection, man. There is that connection. <laughs> no, you know, I, I understand. Um, yeah. What, started off in 98 or 99? One of those years that we uh, got together. Back in the days when I was young, I'm not a kid anymore. <laughs> but some days I sit and wish I was a kid again. <laughs> you, were, you were one of the few that, that knew me that I had unmasked myself to. We were going through. Oh, really? You know, the struggles, you know, especially when we were in that church. And the struggles over there, the religious struggle. Yeah. So I I really had, I didn't really have that much people to turn to because I don't know if I, if I trusted them or not. Mm, Trust. You know, that was the, that was, that's a, that's a click word. That is the foundation (laughs) for being able to open up is trust. Yeah. And, And since you've given me a great impression of yourself. I know mm-hmm. that was masked of yourself back then. But. I didn't realize that. And more, and we're 2023 and 2024. I'm, I'm no, actually more 2024. I'm understanding the majority of it was, I'll say 80% of it was a mask. The rest of it was me putting it on. Because mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yeah, if I don't do this, I won't get a job. If I don't do this, I will be a failure. If I don't do this, I, I, it it became my identity, but it's not who I am. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? And most people think, oh, he's an outgoing person. I am, but I I had to be happy and not show depression because it was draining my my spouse's energy. Mm-hmm. I can't help apathy. I can't help depression. And you can't help that feeling of wanting to reach out, but maybe not have the right confidence, the right swag and most people will lend that out to the nerds um i didn't even know i was a nerd because i was busy being the what's the you know how you watch you know coming coming of age movies where you got the high schoolers that are the populars you got the ones that was neutral that knew everybody then you got the the emo kids and then the nerds and then the, the freaks and geeks outcasts, yeah the <laughs> misfits yeah i was all of them I just stayed in the neutral where I knew everybody and I was able to chameleon myself mm. and be like, I talked to guys that are football players from high school. I was like, this guy, I, to this day, I'm like, this guy, he's like talking to me. Like, like you were the football guy. Why are you talking to me? Like we didn't talk back then, but he's now talking to me. He's a father. You know, the, we label each other because that's what we think the clicks were about. That's how we fit in. But I, I, I was socially awkward. So that's why I used the mask because I was just like, I don't want this. <laughs> you know, <laughs> this is weird. And I, that's, you know, this is also an uncovering for me. But what, uh, like today, how does it affect you in, in your everyday interaction being a, you know, a podcaster, a, a, a you know, a, a boyfriend, um, uncle, Son, you know that the new the new dynamics of you being where you're at now. Oh, hold on. Oh shit! I think my my stomach just growled. Hopefully the the mic did not capture that. I don't know if you even heard that. I oh, didn't. My, st- my stomach is growling. And I you haven't have, eaten. If your mic's that good. I'd be like, <laughs> I want that mic, man. <laughs> I got noise canceling in this bad boy. I have dishwasher going on. You can't hear that. I don't think you can. Oh man. Uh, you know. I got to tell you something before I answer that question. Yeah, go um, ahead, man. A guy landed me into like a, a gig of being an MC. So I was working for this DJ entertainment service, I think, a few years prior to meeting you. And um, okay. yeah, that actually instilled a lot of confidence in me because uh, for the first time in my life, here I was holding a mic, here I was attending a wedding, attending a, a rave. Um, oh, rave at that, not just yeah, a regular yeah. DJ situation. <laughs> yeah, and I got, you know, the DJ team behind me, but, they, you know, I'm the guy like this uh, hosting the program, uh, mm. putting everything in sequence. And, yeah. man, uh, that actually took, you know, most of my shyness away. At first, it yeah. felt kind of weird, you know, like this light right here is is on me right now. And holding that mic, you know, being stage frightened and all. Oh, man, mm. it just took like one uh, deep breath. And I just went all out. I was just like all natural after that. 
Oh, lose yourself in the moment. You want it, you want it. <laughs> you better never let it go. That's that moment where you just yeah. threw yourself out there and puked like fucking Eminem and <laughs> the eight mile and hey, you gonna either crawl back and back, you know, shit. That's a, that's huge, man. A rave. That's not a regular party. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's wild in a rave, man. So yeah, and even you gotta have some energy going for them to be like, "Yo, dog, this dude don't even know what he's doing." Yeah, even years before that, I even no, actually around the same time frame, I'm even like calling into the radio station. You know, sometimes mm-hmm. giving my you know my wackiness or or just trying to you know just be on the radio so I can just like hear myself. You know, yes, I even did that. that. that I actually... entered Casey Kasem. <laughs> By the way, I went to the station Z104 in uh, Virginia Beach, and uh, my friend actually wanted to, you know, taste a muskrat, an actual muskrat as a food. So he tasted muskrat, and, you know, we got out there, and we're on the radio, and that was pretty cool. We were live, and then the DJ said to us, you guys are it's supposed to be in school, huh? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> but this is fun. School's Yeah, we just decided just to hang out and just do this, and, yeah, we, we could have been in trouble, but, you know, we weren't. We somehow had, hit it. Now, now everyone knows, but back then, you know, we just probably gave like a little bit of a note saying, oh, we didn't went to school on this day because of this. Well, um, to my grandfather, thank you very much for covering me. <laughs> thank you, Grandpapa. Yeah. And so. Spanish, Abuelito. <laughs> uh, I, I don't know what it is in Tagalog, but. <laughs> I'm going to have to find that out because I, I do not know that much Tagalog at all. I, I don't even think I was gonna I'm ask you nowhere that. I was near like, that level. You're a super Filipino. You're like, yo, dog, malamig. Um, <laughs> uh, what does that mean? Cold. It's cold, bro. Yeah. It's cold. <laughs> yeah, malamig. <laughs> Shit, I don't even know if I said that right. <laughs> malamig. Because <laughs> sometimes they say, oh, he sounds a little bit too country for Filipino. <laughs> yeah, V's or P's, uh, uh, Bonset. Like, there's a, there's, <laughs> The P carries over in a lot of words in, in the, the, you know, Filipino culture. Shout out. The, the Filipino culture embraced me a lot when I was, cause my, my fiance, uh, well, my high school sweetheart became a fiance when I was in the Navy was Filipino. But, um, yeah, you're Filipino. I'm a lot of things. I'm black, Irish, freaking all kinds of different things, but Cherokee Indian, who knows? Cherokee Indian. Yeah. Who knows, man? Yeah. But I'm Kendrick at the end of the day. Like, you know, it says on there African American. No, I'm I'm Kendrick. I don't know. I've never been to Africa in my life. <laughs> <laughs> uh, descended from there, I think everybody does. You know, like. <laughs> but yeah, you, you know, too bad. Pe- too um, bad people can't really see that though. You look look at what's happening around us, man. They're just mm-hmm. these are all our attributes. What's com- what comprises of us? But people just keep you know wasting their time on that. You know, when you say you're Kendrick, you are Kendrick, dude. You, I am, and I have to actually just start using my actual name. You know, I'm, I'm probably gonna keep it Ken on for the podcast, and I was gonna change it a bunch of names, but I'm starting to, you know, myself start to be a little bit more simple and stop mm-hmm. using um, names and different things to mask. You know, so yeah, um, you know, we're uncovering Johnny Rubes, you know, as John Eric today. Um, and this is not going to be the first I can tell because they're, we're just getting to the point where we're talking about a world where you're not validated, but you're not necessarily discouraged. So you have this open latchkey kid just, but you still found, you talked about the word trust and you were going to go into our, our foundation, but trust. I want to kind of highlight that before we reach the hour mark. Trust. You trusted yourself. You couldn't trust a parent to give you what you need, but you trusted yourself enough to to have eat a muskrat on radio or do those things. And I, that's what what I'm getting to is your bravery to want what you wanted so bad to find your identity inspired me. I was the same thing. I, I, to this day, I. All my life revolved around being a parent and a dude who goes to work, and that's it. Your world pushed you to get out there and talk to people. I rely on you to find the guests because if I do it, then that means I have to follow up and remember and all these things. So it's a vulnerability for me. You have the knack 
to be able to reach and connect people together. And that's a huge attribute as a result of your trauma. Um, so that's why I said this is going to be an ongoing thing because it's an uncovering. And if it's a huge, um, it's an iceberg, right? At the top, mm-hmm. at the bottom, it's, 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 it's massive. We can't uncover that in one uh, show. So we're just chipping, chipping off at this, um, which will create a stronger foundation for the 2400 bot podcast because we're talking about a safe space and a place you can kick back and be yourself. Um, this is like a day one, you know, yeah. of, of really uncovering what it means to hang out on a place where you can just be yourself. You know what I mean? So, yeah. Um, I, 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 you know, you, you did it for me. I didn't realize that's what you were doing every time I was at the skate park and you're interviewing me. Um, I, I didn't realize that you were doing, you gave me a platform to, to just tell my story. And I did say back then, who the fuck is Kendrick Jackson? Because that's literally what we're doing right now. Who is the person with that name? Like, what is, what is their world? What do they do? Everybody has a story. So, um. Oh, I have to I, answer what you just said earlier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go, yeah. Take me back. Cause I'm, uh, I, I yeah. get all over the place too. Man. I, <laughs> it's okay. Yeah. Besides, yeah. uh, you know, besides the emceeing gig and, uh, uh, let me pause here for <laughs> for a second. I'm trying to put myself together. It's sometimes hard when you're you're having a little bit of some social anxiety here. Okay, as... I'm I'm, I'm going to pause you for a second because this uh-huh. is the perfect time to introduce this. This is something uh-huh. that's really game chain for me. It's called breath work. Mm-hmm. And what breath work does is what weed will do, what any drug will do, depending on what it's hitting. It's um. It's hitting, it's regulating your nervous system. So when you feel anxious and you breathe into that, what I mean breathe into it is you feel that tingling fear at the pit of your stomach and those just just not. It's a one, two, three, four breath. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk you through this. It's not, I'm only going to do like a two minute one because obviously. I want you to, you know, to really talk. We're going to count to four, hold at the top for four seconds, and then really release through your stomach and just mm. let it go. So we're going to just do one. Okay. Uh, okay. So one, two, three, four, inhale. One, two, three, four, hold. One, two, three, four, release. And let the the temperature of your breath just keep dissipating out of your body. What that does, energy is real, right? Mm -hmm. When it gets into your system and you feel this weird feeling, it comes into your body and starts becoming physical sensations. What that does is release that almost become permanent physical sensations right back out. So how did that feel? just that one little breath to be able to kind of prepare you for what, you know, you're going to say. It felt really good. It felt like it was, I had so much weight, but once I exhaled, it feels like all that weight is gone. That's what right. it feels to me anyways. So, so what I would like to do in our, in our future podcast is start our podcast with breath work and then eventually lead to meditation. But breath work is life. How you are even able to talk and think is through breath and those breaths are regulating breaths. So when you, when your energy is up tempo, it just brings it back down to center. So you can be able to respond and react a lot more calmer versus either shying away or, but, but go ahead with what you're saying. I just wanted to bring you. If, before I go down. on with that, I think this would be great for every guest. I think you, we should get every guest involved to, you know, breathe in and, I wanted to say something. I was really just kind of getting myself to where I'm finding a mastery level of it Mm -hmm. because I can't really talk about it if I'm not living it. You know, honestly, especially as an artist, I, I, I I mask. I don't, I'm not masking that. It really does regulate my nervous system. And a lot of people take this pill and that pill and this pill. 
breath work is the pill because it's your body doing it. Your, it, it redistributes blood, wash, washes, and just re, re, uh, re, it resets the system. Over time, it becomes mm-hmm. automatic. So you actually do that breath and boom, now you're good. So yeah, oh, yeah. definitely, we definitely should do it before a podcast, but I wanted you to finish your, your last, yeah. uh, your statement. Yeah, I mean, uh, like I said, the MC gig, and then I paused for a moment. And when I put in the public speaking, it did bring about a lot of confidence in me to uh, to talk to people in public, to talk to uh, just people in general. They don't even have to be my friends. Just talking to people, being friendly, uh, just just trying to be a you know a, a, an overall friendly guy. And that carried on the, with me through the um, through the public speaking you're, you're yeah. referring to. Okay. Yeah, U- utilizing helped. all that, it just it just brought a, a much more uh, confident version of myself. And now with this podcast, it just amplifies that a lot more. Uh, yeah, it gives me a chance to you know talk to people. It all started in, um, you know, during COVID, a time where mm-hmm. everything slowed down, and. You know, our social interactions ended for a while, but then there came mm. the, the camera. There came, there came this. This gives a chance <laughs> for equipment. for yeah. me, a chance for me to open, you know, yeah. to, to to the world while it you know we were courage, pretty much isolated. Yeah. yeah, it takes a lot of courage to, in a ways, you self therapied yourself. I know that's not a term, but I, that's what I came up with at the second. You gave yourself the therapy you needed by forcing yourself, and it's called um. I'm sorry, exposure therapy. Yeah. So in exposure therapy, you are giving yourself micro doses of the thing that creates the fear or the anxiety or the depression. So you can then go into acceptance therapy, which is, okay, this is what it is. So, But I can breathe. I can do this. I can. I put this podcast together. I can bring in more people that helps that nervous system regulate more, more people that talk more in that energy, then you can start branching back out and going, okay, I've got that yeah. solidified in me. So you doing the podcast, you doing the public speaking, you sitting in that room back when you were five and six and going through that torture of not being able to be out in the world like that, is what curated this. So now it's time to heal that five year old and speak to that person um, and tell them it's okay. So we can do it right now or you can do it on your own time. But it's time to tell, you know, John Eric, it's okay. You're safe. You know, you're, you, you got, you're getting, you're getting me. I got you. <laughs> you can tell yourself I got you. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm I'm very grateful that you came to my life, Ken, especially at a time where, you know, you saw me struggled there. You, str- you saw me struggled in that church, man. Oh, and yeah. I, I, this gave me a chance to just unmask myself, talk to you about my problems. And, you know, we always, we always related with that, man. We always yeah. like talk one-on-one with that. And you always even just took time out from what you were doing or, you know, or who you were talking with and you get a chance to talk to me. And no, that, it's, that it's, in itself it was just because, uh, awesome. Yeah. Uh, the yeah. lowest common denominator is matters, bro. The lowest common de- denominator in a life matters. Not just black, ma- the person, their mm-hmm. previews, even if it's weird or destructive or whatever it is, matters. Because there's a reason why it's happening. In my mind, I'm doing it because I naturally have a maternal energy. Um, a nurturing energy. Also have my, you know, super male side, but that's not macho at all, crazy. But when I see, when I feel, I don't see, but when I feel an energy not in that that comfortable zone, I want to know. I want to, I want you to share it with me. Mm-hmm. Kind of like the movie Green Mile where he accepts all the energy and he lets it go himself. That's kind of what happens to me, except I could not let a lot of the empath energy go. Um, but that's just a gift that I have and I'm, I'm honored that I have it, you know, because being able to, um, right now I'm talking 
But one of my biggest goals is to be able to listen to understand. And I believe I'm getting better at, you know, more listening to understand and repeat back what I'm hearing. Um, because that's how the person knows you understood what they were saying. Right? <laughs> so yeah, man, I don't know how long you want to go with this. Um, I do got to give my son, um, some medication, um, in his midday. But mm-hmm. uh, we we definitely can pick back um, up again. I I I'm honored that you've had the courage and you kept segueing that courage into different platforms, whether it be blogging back then. Because I was yeah. I thought you were the man. I was like, this guy has a blog. Then when you said you had a podcast, I was like, this guy has a podcast. Oh my <laughs> god! I would need your autograph, Casey. <laughs> John By the Eric. way, Ken, speaking Day of e. blogs, it yeah. was, I, I believe it was 2018, the last time I blogged. So I actually went back into my blogs and started blogging again. Awesome. Yeah. Going back old school with, mm-hmm. with that Terminator. You should bring that Terminator. <laughs> oh, my uh, gosh. Oh, you had, Terminator to, go. Back, you had to go there. I did. That ah. was one of the graphic design. <laughs> phenomenons that was like oh my god this guy took the terminator and his face and he how do you do that then what that what that inspiration does i started doing it in paint then i started uh-huh. in 2013 i went to school for digital media and then i learned adobe acrobat Hey Ken, your your call has stopped due to an incoming call. Hold on. Still there? Okay. It wasn't. I have alarms. People. Oh. Uh, I I have to remember to shut those off because I do myself <laughs> and do not disturb. But I have a ton of alarms to keep my my executive functioning. And for what people don't understand what executive functioning is, because I say it so much, it is mm-hmm. the brain. It is the part of your brain that is on time for a podcast that plans some stuff. That uh wants to do the, the motivating center of your brain. So alarms help me stay on track. Um so that it it, it will cut the pocket off. So I gotta remember to do that. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, um just just interacting with people these days, whether it's something like this platform or just talking to people like during the job or just hanging out at the supermarket, getting some groceries, and then you just wound up talking to people. I've learned to be comfortable with myself. I'm also embracing this, uh, you know, laid back lifestyle. Back then, I was like really depressed because I didn't really, you know, had real friends. Maybe there yeah. were like a few that came along here and there. But yeah, yeah it, it was depressed for the most part. But now here we are, 2024. I'm being open minded. I'm being transparent about who I am. I have nothing to hide anymore. Yeah. You know, and just having this, uh, this, this uh, confidence now in me, just willing to talk to people, man. I, I am all game for that, man. Yeah. Well, um, well I'll, I'll, I'm going to leave you with something that I, that was a uh-huh. word that was given to me when I graduated my rehabilitation process in Studio City. Uh, I'm going to okay. plug it because it's just, it's near and dear to my heart. Shout out to Monterre um, Behavioral Healthcare. Um, you know, if you want to put it in the link in the description below, it would be fine because it's um, for me. The VA pays for this place. It was the Mac Miller Mansion in Studio City. It, you know, rest in peace, Mac Miller Mansion. But the word that I got when I completed every day, going from eight to eight, you know, groups and mm-hmm. doing the hard work. Um, which was a lot better to do in a mansion, by the way, um, which is a lot easier and very vacation. But <laughs> if you don't get that, just being able to have that was the word celebrate. Mm-hmm. I don't know how to celebrate because I don't know how to receive what it is that's good, but I'm learning. So I'm going to leave you with the word celebrate. And when we pick back up, that's you're going to tell me what it means to celebrate John Eric and the things that he's done to give himself to therapy to get here where he is meeting people where other people are still in a shy space are wondering what a podcast is, the motivation to get the equipment, the, the stuff I struggle with, right? Celebrate. 
So that's your word, um, because I'm going to be able to, I'm going to tell you what I'm going to be doing to celebrate too, because that's something I need to do to celebrate the uh, milestones of doing it your fucking self. You know how hard it is to dig in your willpower and heal yourself and not a therapist had anything to do with it. It's monumental. It's, it's a, it's, it's the probably the next level of where we're going to with, with psychology is being given the tools and all that information they know to help yourself. Mm -hmm. So celebrate. So we'll leave it there. And, you know, I, I, again, we're uncovering Johnny Rubes and unveiling John Eric. And I glad you guys stayed on through whatever you felt about him. I'm sure you felt a whole nother new level about yourself and him because of the honesty that he gave today. The, the, we us leading up to this moment, the pre-staging up to this moment, that backstage stuff that you don't know about was displayed today. So thank you for being on. That's the 2400 block podcast. Like, subscribe, follow, because we're having more conversations like that with you. So yes, indeed. And be before out. we, uh, before we go, uh, it is Tuesday, August 13th. It's like 2.09 PM here. Mm -hmm. And I would like to just give a spe special shout out for someone who I just handed, uh, one of these. <laughs> oh, special over. shout outs. Yeah. I remember this conversation. Yeah. So, uh, I'm sure that person is watching and I hope that person is enjoying. I told, uh, this individual to check us out on YouTube. So Please. guys, check us out on YouTube right now. <laughs> he wasn't kidding when he said check us out because he, he probably didn't know that the one you're probably going to be checking out is this one. So this is him. This is John Eric. This is the Johnny <laughs> Rubes that I know, also known as J.E. All the names, J. Rubes, J. Easy. We call him, we call him Rubes. We call him Johnny Rubes, but we're unveiling and I'm grateful that you were able to share today. Thank you. Thank you, Ken. Thanks for this interview. Yeah, uh, you're welcome. I, I was kind of nervous at first, but then, you know, I, I'm 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 feeling better now. Yeah, well, <laughs> as I, we're going, and then and then here we are. Time stir. is about to yeah. cut off. <laughs> <laughs> I stirred the pot. <laughs> yes, you did. But yeah, man, yeah, that was well, awesome. I appreciate you for for uh, for this. Well, catch us on the next episode where we keep stirring the pot and keep having conversations that are real, that people can really start uncovering themselves. So we out. All right. Thanks for checking out this episode of 2400 Block Podcast. Don't forget to follow and subscribe.